Hey, I'm so glad you joined me this morning. We're moving over now into Luke chapter 6, and we're going to look at the first five verses. Now it happened on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the grain fields, and his disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate them, rubbing them in their hands. And some of the Pharisees said to them, Why are you doing what it is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? But Jesus answering them said, Have you not even read this? What David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God, took and ate the showbread, and also gave some to those with him, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he said to them, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So actually, there's a misunderstanding here, uh, whether it's intentional or unintentional. Perhaps it's unintentional. There's a misunderstanding here by the people who are accusing Jesus' disciples. If you go back and you read, I think it's in Leviticus, I forgot the verse just now, but if you read there, you are allowed to thresh. You are allowed to get just enough as you cross the field. And they were taking the, plucking the heads of grain and rubbing them in their hands and, and eating them. That's all they were doing. This was They were not carrying big baskets and, and, and gathering in lots of that on the Sabbath. That wasn't happening. But, but these Pharisees are looking continuously for things to accuse, 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 and try to divide people. And so Jesus says, look, he gives some Bible examples. And then he finally comes in at verse 5. He says, look, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So Jesus is saying, my interpretation of the Sabbath is the correct one. I am God. I am actually the Lord of the Sabbath. It's a thought in his mind. And so Jesus is saying these people are in the clear because Jesus knows. He knows all about what was in Leviticus. He earlier had inspired the Bible writer in Leviticus to write what he wrote, talking about exactly what you could and couldn't do on the Sabbath. So this is kind of a red herring. It's a false uh, thing that's going on, and they're just trying to divide and accuse. But Jesus is, uh, is pulling rank here because Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. He's the Lord of that day above all other days. And so I think that we can trust Jesus' interpretation of how to keep the Sabbath a lot better than we can trust the scribes and Pharisees who had made such a mess of all these things. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. He says it in so many times in so many places here in the Gospel of Luke. Now, Lord, may we uh, receive the, the teaching of the Lord of the Sabbath. May we do what is lawful and right on the Sabbath. Of course, may we be observing the Sabbath and keeping it holy, as the commandment says. But Lord, we thank you that it's a day, a good day, a day for refreshment and not a day of gloom and rules. So help us, Lord to be your Sabbath keepers. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, may the Lord watch over you and may he shower down his blessings upon you, not just on the Sabbath, but all through the six days, working days of the week as well. God bless you.